Hello friends, uh, now we are into our uh, uh, topic on life prediction. Uh, this is one of the uh, subject or module of uh, risk-based engineering. I am Professor Prabhakar V. Varde uh, and uh, this lecture is part of uh, NPTEL, uh, National Program on Technology and Management Learning. Um, sponsored by IITs in India. Um, life prediction is a very uh, important topic. Why? Uh, because uh, there are two modules in our uh, risk-based engineering. Uh, one is physics of failure and other one is prognostics and health management. This module uh, backs up these two topics. That means uh, we will uh, we will be benefited by live prediction or live testing uh, course um, by using this knowledge into uh, physics of failure and prognostics and health management. Um, third reason is uh, live testing uh, is being used as a uh, qualification strategy uh, for uh, uh, for electronics uh, and electrical components and of course for some mechanical components. Um, for structural engineering, uh, the nature of approach is little different. Uh, it depends on sampling and assessing the remaining life uh, in the concrete in case of civil uh, structure and uh, for mechanical, uh, it, it wants to see uh, if any uh, degradation uh, from the reference condition has taken place. Uh, let's say if we take the case of piping, some corrosion has taken place, how much uh, is the remaining life based on the pressure carrying capacity of the pipeline and, uh, um, and uh, uh, then uh, remaining strength in the pipeline after the corrosion phenomena has uh, uh, reduced the thickness of the pipeline. So there are various strategy, but uh, life prediction this word or this subject uh, basically associates uh, electronic, electrical uh, uh, components uh, and of course uh, digital components also uh, if we are not covering that uh, software uh, part of the uh, digital component. So let us get uh, into the introduction of this uh, subject. Uh, well, I was fascinated uh, to see uh, some uh, uh, structures in India uh, when we visited this place and uh, we saw uh, that these buildings are more than 100 years old, okay. Um, this place is called Hampi, you know, and uh, they are still standing tall uh, without much degradation. Um, I would say 90% of the time uh, you know, they, are, they are standing when the way they were built, uh, you know, and some part of the structure definitely would have gone up. But then you can see here, and uh, archaeological survey of India, they maintain it. So probably for uh, structural component, the archaeological uh, uh, survey of India, they must be having a huge database to address many of our civil structural problem. Why I am telling you is that uh, I was I am associated with the nuclear plants, and one of the oldest plant, uh, uh, oldest plant, almost more than 45 years, 50 years. And uh, uh, I could see uh, there is a huge, uh, it is like I would give the name, it is a mine of data in the nuclear plant, whether you talk about the electrical component, electronics component, uh, mechanical component, structure, anything and everything. So the old structure and system, they, are, they really give a learning lesson. Only thing is it requires a patience approach uh, to get into the uh, life prediction for the new structures, taking the data or insight from the old structure. Um, and then uh, now we have this tool in those days, I'm not sure any analysis uh, tool or you know, computational technique was available, but still they have done the good job. Uh, probably they would have had lot of uh, focus on quality of uh, material and construction and things like that. Yeah, but then now we have analytical methods, you know, we can de go deeper into the degradation aspect and all that. We can do much better job. So we can presume that the structure which are built today, uh, they should be lasting for more than 200 years because uh, these structures, they are been uh, standing without much analysis for so many years. 
and uh, still seeing the life for, for 100 plus years. Uh, so, uh, let us see how our nature uh, and environment is sustained uh, when we study these subjects like life prediction, analysis, you know, economics and all that. Uh, well, uh, now uh, I come to my subject, uh, but I thought this perspective uh, was very important for understanding uh, on life prediction. Uh, introduction, uh, first, uh, first of all, I will give this weeks, that, that, that means the, the, this modules uh, structure, what all the subjects they are covered. So in first lecture, uh, we will be covering, uh, giving introduction about the life testing. Okay. So background information, industrial scenario, because if we discuss life, life testing method without the backdrop of industrial uh, scenario, probably our treatment to the subject will not be full and we are not doing justification to the subject as a, uh, as a holistic, uh, you know, approach. Uh, then uh, component characterization for life testing, uh, for life testing. So how to do characterization? Uh, life test could be typically electronic component to put the, uh, 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 the subject in a chamber, go for high temperature, uh, high humidity or it could be load the structure more than uh, it's a design uh, like some piping. If you want to uh, qualify a piping for another 5 years or 10 years and if you know the corrosion rate of the pipeline, then we can say uh, what is the standard uh, pressure that it holds and then we do a testing with 1.2 pressure. So all these things, the techniques, they form. Actually in uh, academics, uh, we have a very skewed view of live testing. That means putting some electronics atom in a, a test chamber, trying to understand the mechanism uh, 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 and then uh, trying to give the time to failure. You know, so in those days, these things were not there, but still uh, they have designed, uh, without naming, they have designed things for more than 100 years. And they are seeing all sorts of load, including uh, earthquake, uh, to uh, te te temperature, environment, um, and what not, dust, everything. And they are still, uh, look at the quality of the things. So, so the uh, advancement is one thing, but the quality which goes into the construction, uh, that, uh, that can uh, give a bigger answer. Uh, so, material degradation and life prediction, then uh, fourth module will be life testing approaches, uh, probably. Here will be more focused on uh, in typical sense what we call life testing or uh, life prediction approaches uh, for electrical and electronics and then we, what are the stress uh, testing accelerated ex uh, factor and uh, evolution of PDF. In fact all these terminologies will become a very dominating aspect when we talk about the physics of failure and um, prognostics and health management uh, in the coming time. So uh, let us uh, see. Um, uh, what is what is the background? Um, because you know industries had been managing uh, the the infrastructure, machineries, and all for a longer time. But the background is like this: the way for in military reliability as a subject was evolved. Uh, it was felt that now we should give some time. Like you know, um, as far as the nuclear plants are uh, concerned, actually initially in 50s the plants were built for 30 years. Uh, 40, uh, 30 to 40 years and uh, nobody had expected if they will be lasting for more than 50 years. So in uh, United States of America, um, most of the plants which were built in 50s, they have been qualified for 40 years, 60 years and now the quite a few uh, are, are on the verge of getting qualified for 80 years. So uh, one of the reasons for the, them was the conservative safety margin that was kept in all the aspects of design, construction, management, everything, you know, uh, in, including safety also. So, um, so, but now, now we are at the crossroad where, uh, uh, we are, where the world has become competitive and uh, it is getting globalized. All, all the energy systems, they are competing uh, for, uh, for delivering better quality power supply uh, if you talk about the energy systems. So, the system ha have to be less bulky and the uh, uh, safety margin has to be, uh, uh, you know, based on some rationals. Okay. So, uh, in that sense, the, we, sh we should have a uh, rather a better prediction of life of the component. Okay. So, uh, so how we address uh, during uh, routine things, uh, we carry out maintenance. We carry out maintenance. That means 
we bring uh, as far as the uh, as far as the scientifically we can we repair the plant uh, repair the system and bring it to we call as good as new okay uh, and uh, then further it operates uh, the reliability comes down again shut down the plant again you uh, do maintenance management uh, and then uh, then this cycle goes on and that's how we ensure uh, the bath tub curve the middle portion useful period you know which is shows co constant one is constant is because of uh, uh, you know uh, increase in hazard and all that but uh, uh, their maintenance is playing a bigger role it brings back the system to uh, not exactly as as new as normal but it is serving its purpose the way it was serving 10 years 15 years and all now uh, so and then in between there are systematic approaches tailored to ensure that there is a uh, quality issues are not compromised so quality assurance program is there in which they will, they will see suppose if it is there a piping uh, we, we would like to see that the thinning or uh, the thickness reduction in the pipelines are have not gone be, uh, below uh, you know and there is no crack uh, uh, traces of cracks are there in the pipeline so uh, you know the uh, the kind of quality we are getting nowadays especially for uh, reactor grade material uh, we don't see any surprises like crack ruptures and all that um, but then uh, the quality assurance program it gives us the confidence uh, that you know the plant is being monitored and uh, the possibility or probability of an um, uh, a surprise uh, is uh, is reduced i will not say eliminated because the coverage of uh, quality assurance program or yeah, the third one is insurance pro uh, inspection program uh, everything depends on that what how how well they cover in an optimum way uh, to the uh, complete uh, system structures and component and then the relatively new methods accelerated live testing and all have come uh, and then we'll discuss about the major uh, steps in live uh, prediction okay so uh, now uh, we come to the uh, uh, background information in the sense that uh, traditional approach the name was quality and this quality movement started somewhere in 50s 60s and all that and finally for a longer period uh, it really along with the uh, along with the safety approaches with the defense in depth and all it has done the wonder uh, because in those days uh, the kind of uh, knowledge base that was there which is available today uh, it was it was uh, there is a question how much confident we were there but then the safety margin and this kind of thing and quality quality of the component uh, and there is no compromise on the quality so uh, so uh, since quality is not a dynamic uh, attribute uh, quality assurance quality control took you here i am putting so these two uh, quality assurance uh, uh, had gone all through the life of the plant while as quality control uh, in manufacturing as well as uh, in operations uh, they were maintained and the parameters were not allowed to go outside the control limits so this was uh, one approach and then the remaining life, useful life this also movement started um, quite a bit after 60s or so or maybe around that time and the remaining remaining life assessment came uh, it started with the simple cases like um, uh, corrosion uh, induced degradation in the pipeline how much is the remaining thickness so if thickness a, a linear problem solution simple linear uh, approach uh, if the pipeline is corroded, uh, let us say one thou per year, then uh, uh, how much is the remaining length? What is the pressure carrying capacity of the pipeline that is required? And then uh, add some margin and see that this pipeline will last for 10 years. And, and it, is a, it is a true statement of uh, remaining useful life statement. And practically, it has been found to be very supportive. Uh, you know, and it it contributed to refurbishment, uh, life extension program, and all in a in a in a big way. And uh, why we are discussing here? Uh, here. Uh, this particular strategy is quality control, life extension program. Actually, uh, I can name a few approaches that were developed at BRC, uh, wherein a complete plant, uh, life extension was granted based on a uh, earlier and initial version of risk-based approach. You know, now risk-based approach, what we are discussing here is very enriched and uh, we are uh, having all the complicated topics and all that. But the, it, it has been established that you know through risk based approach a regulatory uh, uh, license can be obtained for a plant for 10 years 
in between three, three times it will be certified but uh, 10 years certification had been given so it uh, it, it uh, sort of uh, you know validates the uh, this approach that it, it can be used for uh, serious jobs like you know uh, plant life extension remaining life assessment and things like that now uh, one has to categorize different uh, uh, different category of equipments because uh, each category or a uh, type of category they require different treatment so uh, let us say for structural component they are bulky mega uh, in size and all so anything has to be done it has to be done in situ so there is a different strategy for this for concrete samples are taken out so it is basically sampling technique then concrete will be uh, samples will be subjected to the remaining strength and uh, you know further further factor of safety and then finally uh, a qualification will be given and this can happen uh, uh, after 20 years of the uh, building the plant to uh, uh, every 10 years and things like that and uh, it works very well so that means there is a life testing uh, procedure available uh, for mega structure mechanical component mechanical components there is always a mechanical wear uh, and things and all so that is where um, some parts are replaceable some parts are not replaceable if the parts are uh, replaceable they can be maintenance routine maintenance follow uh, can do the uh, you know um, uh, job for us uh, in terms of uh, life extension and if it, if, it, if they are not replaceable then complete uh, casing can be replaced uh, or you know uh, but then that has got a, it requires very long shutdown and you know it, it has got an implication so uh, a new component can be installed in place of that but in a, every industry has some component which are called core components which are uh, life limiting component they cannot be replaced so once those components touch their life uh, and end of life then the plant has to be dismantled so those components are more important when we talk about the system refurbishment actually and then electrical et electronics and process instrumentation they are three uh, uh, three elements or three type of category of component they require similar treatment uh, typical to our knife uh, life limiting uh, 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 life testing uh, procedures um, if you want to test the remaining life uh, from the population take out one or two pieces put it in a chamber try, try to see what are the degradation what is the degradation rate and then try to see whether they will be uh, surviving for another 10 years five years given the backdrop of so much of uh, uh, loss of life in the preceding 20 25 years and all that and you get statement for another 20 10, 20 or 30 years so like cables uh, then instrumentation um, then uh, we can say uh, even power cables uh, and all they can be uh, tested something like then nuclear components nuclear components have got given the one of the uh, stress that is uh, um, neutron uh, they they have to uh, undergo neutron uh, flux uh, uh, irradiation so what is the kind of degradation which is taking place uh, this particular aspect is also better understood now and the test facility for this component is again a nuclear reactor where the uh, com subject component will be put put under high flux uh, thing neutron bombardment gamma environment very harsh environment i would say uh, and then it will be uh, tested uh, and then it will be qualified also okay and digital system yes digital system can be treated at par with uh, electronic system but for its uh, software dimension so software dimension requires a uh, different type of qualification but one good advantage is software does not uh, does not uh, age they are replaced for seeing enhanced uh, functionality so these two are different topic and software replacement or you know re reformatting and all they are not complicated aspect uh, you know they it, 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 it may not require any interruption or in the plant or anything so these are the different categories we talk they require different approaches and uh, we discuss those approaches here uh, now uh, uh, reliability assurance during operation because uh, when the plants are designed let's say uh, uh, in five years three years one year four years they operate for uh, something like tens of years 30 40 years so uh, what we require is reliability assurance strategy for the plants uh, what whatever mo modern methods are have come uh, they they are very recent one uh, you know so let us say quality assurance and uh, engineering planning quality assurance means periodically uh, go take measurements uh, like uh, uh, in service inspection and all uh, go and see the thickness measurement uh, 
uh, various methods are there uh, and ensure that, that there is and then local uh, local defect should not be there so for that also there there are strategy magnetic particle test and all that uh, so um, then monitoring and surveillance monitoring and surveillance is the one thing wherein the, not only the component signature vibration temperature but also the environmental and process parameter they will give you a signal that there is some problem uh, small leakages somewhere and all that uh, it will tell you that you know this component is degrading and then periodic performance testing of uh, standby uh, system in service inspection i told and that among this the latest one is condition monitoring if we feel that there is one equipment uh, failure of which um, we cannot afford because it will result into uh, uh, enhanced risk or loss of reliability function. So, we can put a uh, sensor on board and we can uh, keep monitoring those sensors and we get the information. So, it is called like some bearing. Now, bearing temperature increasing, it can easily be monitored and alarm can be sounded. Vibration monitoring, we can do alarm. So, all these techniques are working as part of condition monitoring. Uh, now, what are the major steps in life prediction? So, first of all, you have to identify the structure and if I have to go by a risk based uh, approach, then but there is a very uh, elegant approach uh, that is risk importance measure and through which we can prioritize the component and identify the component for live prediction because they are critical for the system. Then in those components, uh, try to assess what are the critical failure modes which might result either into unsafe failure or if they, uh, uh, they result in safe failure mode that means reliability is compromised. So, a decision can be taken. Of course, safety is a overriding factor. So, critical failure modes which are uh, unsafe in nature will take the priority. Then identify the critical value of the uh, uh, failure, defining a failure criteria objectively with a crisp definition is one of the important thing in any modeling that we do. So, uh, when we do some analysis, the, you will come to know ki how to, uh, to make it crisp and very objective. So, that further analysis, the definition of the problem is uh, you know clear, more clear. Characterization of degradation of process variables. Uh, whatever you, you want, what process and all. Uh, in life testing, one of the ch challenge is designing a fixture which is monitoring the uh, component online and sometime you have to operate that board or that equipment inside the chamber. So, from remote operation we have to do that and it is a complete engineering. Sometimes uh, it is under, uh, underestimated this particular aspect, but developing a fixture and control is, is very important and uh, then live test uh, experiments. So, if you have a simulation module, you can do a uh, pre-qualification and otherwise you can go directly, you can have your own parameters and do the testing and ensure that the component is able to bear those kind of stresses and still with acceleration factor, it can, it can give you that uh, life which we demand maybe in couple of years or you know something and monitoring and degradation trends. That also we have to see because uh, at what rate it was going because it will be useful for future prediction. So, trends are very important and uh, a proper database of those things are uh, uh, required. Um, and then we can, we can separate out uh, if possible the operational stresses and environmental stresses you know. So, uh, like temperature uh, is a could be operation, but voltage current. So, if we can distinguish which aspect or we have a way to do that, probably it is a research topic, but it should, then it will be better for us uh, what, where to put our resources for controlling operational or uh, uh, environmental factor and analysis of data and compilation of course. Uh, state of art in life prediction is I would some uh, uh, try to go like accelerated life testing, highly accelerated life testing and highly accelerated uh, screening method. So, uh, no, normally screening form part of the uh, analysis uh, this thing project. Then uh, uh, highly accelerated testing basically we have to do uh, for precipitating the mechanism, failure mechanism and that is why in a short time we um, increase the stresses and get it. And accelerated life testing probably when we are trying to look for parameter like uh, mean time to failure, mean time between failure and all the component is new, you do not have any data. So, that time we can use this, but then it has to be replaced by our, uh, you know, uh, field data later on. Um, and here also the FATI should get the priority uh, because solder FATI, especially on electronic boards and uh, the uh, environmental testing chamber are the right fixture for doing uh, those jobs 
and it should be modeled here. So that that straight up art is there now. Easily we can do it. We can in fact gone into the uh, modeling for uh, not only solder. We have gone into the modeling of packaging of uh, packaging devices and complex uh, laptops and all that. So uh, quite a bit uh, our uh, art is matured as far as the life testing is concerned. But it is catering to more mainly on electronics and digital system. Okay, uh, and then a live testing laboratory. Uh, this is a host of laboratories uh, a student can go and see there uh, vibration chamber, temperature humidity chamber, corrosion uh, loop, uh, test loop and for what particular purpose that is neutron addition, neutron test loops are you know ins built in inside the reactor. So again here also fissure development is very important, precursor parameter monitoring, pre precursor parameter monitoring will you will do, only you will be able to figure out which is the uh, compet uh, uh, competitive mechanisms, uh, uh, you know uh, competent mechanisms which are coming in, who are taking the lead and who become important for uh, communicating the health of the uh, component. Uh, okay. Uh, then few mode facilities because some, some, many cases they involve chemicals and this kind of things. Then the optical microscope, scanning electron microscope, photon emission microscope and impedance analyzer. These are the basic facilities that are required to build a uh, live testing uh, facility. Okay. Uh, then uh, so now I have given the background what goes into the live, live testing. Okay. So uh, from here we understood that if I have to uh, uh, qualify a plant or if I have to qualify an equipment, how I should go about, okay. Uh, and then the left facilities that is required type of uh, live testing and uh, uh, loop and all live testing loops and all, uh, how we can use it. So this is the beginning of the chapter live testing. This was the first lecture. Uh, in second lecture, we will go into the uh, further detail of associated aspect of live testing. Thank you.